father was died when he was 33 years old so my mother raised us all she there were she had eight children two died when they were young and the other six are all gone now but there were six of us we were i was born in new albion spent my youth there and went to cataraugus high school graduated in 1945. what's your date of birth 9 28 27. yesterday december 7th 1941 a date which will live in infamy the united states of america was suddenly and deliberately attacked by naval and air forces of the Empire of Japan. It was a big deal. And then we went to war the next day. Quite a few of them had went off to war. We started with a class of 45 and ended with about 20, so quite a few of them went. All my brothers were in the service also I had. Kenneth and Irwin and Gare were all in the service at one time or another. Ken was in Florida, Irwin was in Germany, and Gare was Germany. He was much later after the war. I remember everybody was involved in the war effort though then, whether you were gathering scrap iron or rationing and blackouts and airplane watching and a lot different. Everybody was involved in the war. It wasn't just those that were in the service. Everybody was participating. So I worked several different places during high school. Railroad and wardens. At some point do you get a letter from Uncle Sam uh, saying greetings? Yes, shortly after I graduated. I went for my physical and then well, I was scheduled to go in the service in February, 46. That's it, got it. Mm -hmm. And the place I was working went on strike, so I went in and enlisted and went early in 46. Well, I enlisted in the Army and I was, ended up in the Air Corps. So where did you go to boot camp? Lackland. I went to Chinoot and went to Weather Observer School for a short period of time, then I volunteered for overseas and was sent to Okinawa. There was nothing left, all, all the buildings were destroyed and we had a couple of Quonset huts and tents. I worked in personnel in a tent. <laughs> uh, were, were there much interaction with the Japanese? There was none at all. We were on one end of the island and they were on the other end. I remember once my buddy and I took a life raft and went down the river into the ocean and went up the coastways. Had quite a difficult time getting back. <laughs> Just a rubber life raft ah. with the paddles. Did you wonder whether you were ever going to get back? <laughs> a little concerned, yes. So how did you uh, explain that to your superiors? <laughs> I don't know if they inquired it. We probably didn't tell them. <laughs> I remember that we <clears throat> always put our mosquito netting around our cot at night because the rats come running over you and then they poison them all. Oh my <laughs> it, God. it was a mess of them there when we first got there. One night when I was on guard duty in the headquarters, why, there was a top secret paper laying on the desk and I read it and it's, it's gave an estimate of how many Japanese were 
down on the other end of the island yet. It wasn't a lot of them. I think like 83 or something. We had uh, P-38 airplanes there for, they were getting ready to invade Japan. That's why we took Okinawa. So after Okinawa, then, then where did they send you to? Home. Home? That was only 18 months at that time. I think that it, it's outstanding what we accomplished. They, some people did great things. My cousin was one of them. His name was Clarence Colson. He was my aunt's son. And he went in the service in early of 41 before the war started. And then he went all the way through Africa and Sicily and then they pulled him out of there so sent him to England to train for the invasion and he went ashore at Omaha Beach when we invaded and he was in a mortar platoon he had and they went ashore there and they were pinned down and he took a machine gun and had one of his men with a whole clip of bunch of clips to put in the gun and they found a path and went up through this minefield to where the pillbox was that was holding them down and set up their machine gun and a ger German threw a mortar at him and he forgot to pull the pin out of the mortar so he shot him and then he had the pillbox he was shooting in the back end of it and he shot a few and then 18 of them surrendered to him oh, so he, he was received a distinguished service medal which is that's as high as it gets yeah next to the congressional medal of honor so yeah. he went all through the battles and into germany mm -hmm. he Came home on a 45-day leave and went back and uh, about the time the war ended told us a few of his stories and then he got discharged and we we were been Marsh and I my wife I used to go to dinner with him a lot and I'm interested in genealogy so we dug into a lot of things family-wise well I went to Burgard vocational school for auto mechanic and then I worked at the Ford garage in Cataraugus mm -hmm. and worked there till the Korean War started and then I went back in for four years. I went to Otis Air Force Base up on Cape Cod mm -hmm. and was there approximately a year and then I went to Japan and I spent 30 months there. What was your assignment at Japan? In personnel I, with the 374th troop carrier group. We flew troops to Korea. And where in Japan did you, were you stationed? Tachikawa. It's near Tokyo. Well, mostly they were happy to be out of there for a few days. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, they endured a lot there, I think. We had a bad accident there one night. Uh, just before quitting time, the radio operator came in and said, tell the old man we've got one down and one of our aircraft crashed just the end of the run, just off the runway. And at that time, it was the biggest 
accident in aviation history as far as fatalities was concerned. There were slightly over a hundred mm. killed. And these are troops? Yes. I think the morale there was good. They were happy when it was about to end. We were, our airplanes went down and picked up Indian troops to supervise when we were ending the war and flew them up there. Then did you come back stateside? Yes. And I went to Bryan Air Force Base, which is State College mm -hmm. in Texas, and finished the rest of my enlistment there. Went to work for my uncle, who was a electrician, and I worked at the electrical trade, and then I worked for my brother at Pritchard Hardware primarily as an electrician and I worked part-time at the post office all this time and then in 1979 I was po appointed postmaster of Little Valley wow. and retired in 1990 so I've been retired 29 years.